Hello world, Shelly here, and today I just want to talk through some new makeup and skincare that I've been testing out, most of which, actually I think everything I'm going to show you I love, what I've been liking lately, and how it's going. But before we start, I have an update for you. I had promised that when I ran out of my last bottle of the Number 7 Future Renew, that I would weigh the bottle when it was empty and then compare it to the weight of a bottle when it's full, because my only complaint with this product is that these bottles you can't see through them and they give zero warning as to when they're about to be empty like they don't start sputtering until the day before they're empty so unless you're keeping a spare on hand which now I am because I had to buy one get one 40% off so I bought two of them but unless you keep a spare on hand you're gonna end up having probably a few days before you get your refill bottle because I will only buy it on sale because it's expensive. So here's the deal. The empty bottle without the cap. So take the cap, this cap, take that off. This bottle, when it's empty, weighs 3.8 ounces, not fluid ounces, weight ounces on a scale. 3.8 ounces, and when it is brand new and full without the cap, it is 4.7 ounces. So if you ever want to know how much you got left inside there. Now you can weigh your bottle and find out. I've been meaning to do that the last few bottles I've gone through and I always forget and I throw my old one away and then I don't have it when it's empty, but there you go, 3.8 and 4.7. Those are your numbers. All right, let's start out with the thing that is newest to me. So I have the least experience with it relative to the rest of these things but I'm so excited because it's so good. And I probably would not have bought this if you guys didn't so highly and in mass recommend it. And that is the Ritual Day Fee Thorn Oil Primer. It's the Priming Elixir. It's a facial oil, but oh, it is nice. The texture and consistency is smooth and it soaks in quickly but it is a priming oil. Now, I've only had one other oil in my life that I thought actually did work as a primer. Ironically, it was a physician's formula product. I think they still sell it, and I think I still have it. If I look in my primer drawer here, the physician's formula one was actually a, I believe it was an SPF oil, which that too struck me as completely strange. I don't have it in here. Oh, it, because it's SPF, it's in my bathroom. I do still have it though. So, but that, you know, I always thought like, you can't use an oil for a primer. Like a primer has to be like silicone or moisturizer, like, you know, something with some grip to it. No, I, I that one, the Physician's Formula one changed my mind and this one just proved it again. It smells nice. It's clean, good ingredients. It feels amazing on the skin. It soaks in quickly. So you don't, you can, they recommend doing it as the last step of your skincare, which is where most of my facial oils would live. But my skin is so dry that I can actually do facial oil and moisturizer and all that in my bathroom with my skincare. And then when I come out to do my makeup, I can add more oil. <laughs> like my skin will just drink it right up. So, <laughs> sorry to sound effects. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, this one's beautiful. I've only used it a couple of times so far, but it is, mmm, it's good. Thank you guys, because, yeah, I probably wouldn't have bought it. I would've just been like, eh, another oil, whatever. No, I really, 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 really like it. So there's that. All right, next up, I have to thank my friend Amber for sending me a total freaking haul of K-Beauty stuff. And some of this is not new to me, but re-new to me, where I hadn't been using it for quite some time. And some of it is new to me. So actually only one thing is not new to me, but I'm so glad it's back in my life. Hot Alabo. Um, the, uh, it's the premium version. I forget the name of this thing. It's like a hyaluronic acid. Uh, basically use it for seven skins. Brightening lotion. And so what I've been doing with this is actually doing one skin every morning doing this as my very first step and it's just super hydrating and not irritating and a good base if you have dehydrated skin like I do. 
I can still put one layer of this down and my skin will still soak up my serums and the rest of my skincare so it doesn't interfere with that. Uh, or you can do it separately as a Seven Skins situation, but mm, good one for that purpose. The other things in that collection that Amber sent me. Thank you, Amber. This one, Beauty of Joseon. This is the Revive Eye Serum. It is ginseng and retinol. And I love it. <laughs> I have been using it even underneath my Clarins, the red bottle, the Total Eye Lift. Uh, this is more of a serum consistency, so I can go underneath that because the Clarins is more of a cream consistency. And even doing both of them, I'm not having any issues with milia or things being too heavy under my eyes, underneath makeup. And ginseng is really nice under the eyes for brightening and like waking and de-puffing in the morning time. And the fact that it's got some retinol as well, you're going to get some of the anti-aging, the smoothing of lines, you know your good anti-aging stuff for your under eye. So bravo on this one. This has become a staple every day. The, I love this sunscreen. I'm a, I'm a fan of K-Beauty sunscreens anyway. Uh, Madagascar Centella. This is from Skin, Skin1004 is the brand. And this is the Hyalucica Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA4+. And you know me and my centella, centella asiatica, tiger grass, rawr. Anytime I can do the tiger grass, rawr. Great skin ingredient. Love centella asiatica. Uh, so this is a serum -y. Looks like a cream, but it feels like a serum for sunscreen. Look how smooth it is. Like, look how it's really... Watery is not the right word, but it's a very thin, lightweight, like, viscosity to it, but it sinks in right away. Like, I can go straight into makeup with no problem. I don't need a ton of time. It's not going to go pill up on me under my foundation. Uh, I'm very much enjoying this one, so bravo on the Skin1004. I feel like I need to try more from this brand. That's, that's my instinct right now. Also from that haul, this is a lip balm, an SPF lip balm, the Melty Cream Lip Milk Vanilla. I need Sherlock to tell me what this brand is. Mentholatum, or is Melty Cream the brand? I don't, I can't tell. Uh, but it is an SPF lip balm. And typically SPF lip balms on me leave a very white cast. This one does not. Like... See, no white cast does not leave a white cast. And I like that because the white cast can be very annoying in lip balms. I actually had another brand that I can't think of the name of that I was wearing underneath my lip products, but it did leave a very white cast, but I was wearing it anyway because I've neglected SPF on my lips always. I've never used SPF on my lips. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. I threw it away because this one is just way better. So that is that. Thank you, Amber, for that haul. I have some other things I still haven't gotten into my rotation that I haven't used yet, so more stuff will come from that haul. All right, should we do, should we finish off skincare? Let's finish off skincare. So Inky List has a new moisturizer. This is the Bioactive Ceramide Repairing and Plumping Moisturizer. Now, I love ceramides in my moisturizers and oh yeah, sounds good, sounds good. But here's the thing, when I was reading the description of this moisturizer, I thought to myself, that sounds like a moisturizer that could be a moisturizing primer, you know, like a makeup primer. And you know I'm into those, I made one of my own, my Bacuchiol version. So, and just, just to give some props, like the very first product that made me start thinking of priming moisturizers because I'm dry skin was the silicone free priming moisturizer from Good Molecules. Still one of my favorites. Love this stuff. Then Jones Road came out with this oil free. Is that the name of it? Let me make sure I'm getting the name right. Yes, the oil free moisturizer. 
and this actually works very well as a primer. I prefer it in the summertime because it's a lighter weight moisturizer and I don't need as much moisture in the humidity of summer, but then there was that one. Then I was like, all right, clearly I like these priming moisturizers. So that's what I made my own. This one's a Bakuchi all based version. You can get it on my website, shopgoow.com. So then when the Inky List came out with this one, they don't call it a priming moisturizer. They call it a repairing and plumping moisturizer. But the description made me think it sounded like it was going to be good for a priming moisturizer. And let me show you the texture of it. So see how it's a little bit thicker? That's step one of a, a really good, at least in my world, priming moisturizer. So let me show you the consistency here. But the thing is, they're thick, but they're not... <sighs> They're not super heavily emollient. They're not gonna, they're not like a night cream. It can be thick, but have a drier texture. That was the hardest part when I was formulating my own was to get that thickness without the super slippy feeling because the super slippy feeling will not make a good primer. You need a dry feeling moisturizer, one that's got a little bit of grip no, not a lot of slip, you know what I'm saying? But it still has to sink in quickly. So to me, that was the challenge of that. This one, this Inky List one, it's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. So if you are a fan of priming moisturizers, like moisturizers you can use as a primer to give you that good, smooth, grippy base for your makeup, and maybe you don't want it to have a ton of silicone or any silicone in it, check out some of these priming moisturizers because that has been my new thing lately and I'm loving it. So this one, the Inky List Bioactive Ceramide. This is really nice as a primer. I think that is the last of the skincare. Yes, all right, let's talk makeup. Things I've been loving. CoverGirl. They have relaunched their lip stain pens and the reason they relaunched them, so they had discontinued them and you know, they had gone cruelty free uh, years ago now, several years ago, and they relaunched these as a vegan formula. So I had gotten sucked into the TikTok advertising in a very good way because I love these. The Satchu Lip Liner Stains, S-T-A-Y-N, and so I have a few of these. There's a third one around here somewhere. These are the ones that you paint them on and then you wait 10 minutes and then you peel it off and it leaves the stain behind for most of the day. So I, I was liking these. Really nice. Love them, love them. Put them on first thing when I'm doing my makeup and by the time I finish my makeup, I could peel them off and everything's good, right? Well, so then CoverGirl relaunched these lip stain pens. And they're more like, you know, drawing on your mouth with a, with a felt tip pen. It's a stiff felt tip, like a marker kind of, like a Sharpie. Now, because it's that type of an applicator, you do have to be pretty good at drawing. Like, I mess it up regularly because I'm not good at drawing. However, once you get the hang of it, these things dare I say, they stain even better than the peel-off one, and you don't have to wait. Like, now they do apply a bit darker than the peel-off one. The peel-off one's a little bit more subtle in the stain that it leaves behind. However, I do think you can mess around with these and smudge them a bit and wipe a bit of it off so that you don't have that deep color if you don't want it. I also picked pretty deep colors anyway, but these last really well and they will even last after I wash my face, sleep that night, the next morning I will still have a, a trace of these stains on my lip. So if you don't like that, they would not be good. But if you're looking for a long wear, you know, it's not gonna stay as bold like once you eat a meal, for example. But you will have enough trace of that color. I like to wear a lip gloss over them. You'll have enough of the trace of color there to go the whole day with like no maintenance on your lips whatsoever. And they don't feel like anything because it's just a stain. You don't feel anything on your lips really. So you just put whatever over it, lip gloss, whatever lipstick, if you use it as a liner. I use it for my whole lips. The other thing I like about these versus the peel off ones is the peel off ones, the center, like the inside of my lip, doesn't stay as well. I think because of the moisture there from talking and whatnot, these stay a lot better in that center moisture area. I'm loving them. I'm going to get more colors. They're fantastic. 
what else do we got? Let's talk two foundations that I've been, dare I say, obsessed. You know I don't like to throw that word around, but I've been all over these. Ritual de Fee. This stuff, oh, it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And you can apply it as a slow, relaxing, full face, like going for the coverage. You can apply it in a 30 second, use your fingers, slap it all over your face. It's gorgeous either way. Like that blows my mind. And the thing that blows my mind the most, three to four drops of this covers my whole face in medium coverage. I still can't even believe it. Like phew, blows my mind. Uh, I still have some of my samples that I had gotten. I've said this before, I will say it again. They, they offer samples, so you can get three little, what do you call these, capsules, I guess, for $15 of three different shades of foundation. You can get their concealer sample, their cream concealer sample uh, in these little, like, pots. This I have used this sample for literally a month, like three or four days a week for a month, and I still have some left in here of the concealer. The, I just hit pan, as you can see on the bottom of this. These little capsules, each one of them, I got three to four full faces of makeup out of this sample. So 15 bucks, you can get samples. They're generous samples. And that to me says they are confident enough in their product to let you use it multiple times to really know if you're gonna enjoy wearing it and you wanna purchase the full size. And if I'm not mistaken, when I ordered the samples, I believe I got a coupon code along with the samples that allowed me to get a discount off the full size if I wanted to purchase it, and I did purchase it. And I'm also today wearing, I don't know, because I just tried it the first time today, this is one of their lab releases from Ritual Day Fee, where you can buy it at a discount and it's it might be a product they end up releasing, they might tweak it before they release it, but the whole point is you buy it, you try it, and then you fill out a survey, give your feedback about it. Uh, so this is their new concealer that will hopefully become a product in a doe foot applicator instead of just the cream applicator. But this foundation is fabulous. It's gorgeous. It has not let me down. I've worn it at least a dozen times by now. Actually more because I really, that first couple of weeks I had this, I was wearing it every single day. It's beautiful. Ritual de Fee is like my new crush. Let's, oh, we did talk about the oil. The thorn oil. Did we talk about it? Why am I losing my mind all of a sudden? Get the thorn oil, the priming elixir. They have a few products with thorn oil. This is the first one that I've gotten. Highly recommended by you guys. I had to get it and I, I'm in love. Yeah, I did talk about it. Oh, it's been a long day. Next foundation that I am obsessing over, <laughs> like wearing it a lot. Polite Society, new brand to me. It's the first thing I've ever tried from them. Gorgeous foundation, just gorgeous. And again, apply it with a brush, apply it with your fingertips, do your nice, slow, long, marinated face, or do your quick out the door, go, go, go face. It works either way. Beautiful coverage, beautiful finish, beautiful smoothing. Like, they're just beautiful. I'm just, mmm, loving, loving them. All right, e.l.f. has a new putty color corrector eye brightener. I got the shade Fair. I'm going to say, I don't think this is a color corrector at all because <laughs> if you're color correcting dark circles, that's blue or purple, you need like something peachy orange and this is just pink. Like it is just way not color correcting. However, it's a beautiful, slightly brightening, under eye shade, so I would call it a brightener if I had to call it something. But really the reason I keep using it is that it's really hydrating under the eyes. And so if your dryness or crepiness under the eyes is what makes you look like you have more lines under your eyes, try something like this because what this is doing for me is like plumping and hydrating those lines so that you can't really see them as much. And that's what I've been using it for. It's not super brightening and it's definitely not color correcting in my opinion, but it's beautifully hydrating. So I wish they called it that. Uh, but whatever it is, I'm enjoying it. All right, I got, you've seen me use this a hundred million times at this point, the What's Up Beauty Serengeti Highlighters. Oh, this is the Wild Acacia. I'm probably saying it wrong. Look at that cheetah. Look how pretty. Now these are all 
they, there's two different ones and they're two tones. So you, you can either use the pink or the white or combine the two for a third shade. The packaging's beautiful. A portion of the proceeds goes to benefit the cheetahs in the Serengeti and I'm in love. And while I'm on the topic of What's Up Beauty, uh, this is not new. I've used it so many times. I am almost hitting pan on my favorite shade in this palette. Uh, but the Dragon Eye eyeshadow palette, if you don't have it yet, you need to get it. I am I wear this so often, it's ridiculous at this point. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. The mattes are beautifully blendable. The shimmers are just, oh, duochrome goodness. I, I, I love it so much. I use every single shade in this palette. That is rare for me. I have such a crush on this palette. Oh my gosh. One more thing from What's Up Beauty, the Watch Me Mascara. I am digging the heck out of it. So I love the Color Street Mascara primarily because of the wand. And I'm gonna show you both of these wands. I hope more companies start putting out wands like this because I enjoy them. Now my Color Street Mascara is almost empty. So <laughs> let me do this without spilling anything. Okay, now let me turn it the right way. Hold on, I can't see. Oh, I need Sherlock. I need Sherlock, I can't tell. On the What's Up Beauty side, there we go. Yeah, I got it the right way. So the thing about what I'm digging about these wands, can I hold this in a way that you're gonna be able to see it? Do you see how the top is curved and the bottom is flat? and how the bottom has more dense, shorter bristles and the top has curved, longer bristles. I'm digging the heck out of this and here's why. So I've said for many years now, my favorite appearance of mascara is when there's a lot of depth at the root of the lashes, at the base of the lashes. So it looks like a wall of lashes down there but then I want separation and fluttery, flowy, millions of lashes look. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the look that clumps them together. That has its time and place, like that Twiggy look from the 60s. Like there are certain looks that that's perfect for. But in my everyday look, I want lots of depth at the root and then I want to look like I have a million lashes. I want it to grab every single lash. And this kind of brush, you take the flat end first and that's kind of like where most of the product is sitting when you first pull the brush, the wand out of the tube. So you do that flat, short side first, and that's gonna lay down the product at the root of the lashes. Then you flip the wand over and you use the longer curved bristly side to pull the product through to the tips of all of your lashes. And I am finding now, Color Street was the first product I ever tried that had that kind of a wand. And then when I got the What's Up Beauty mascara, it has a very similar wand, different, different shaping to it, but same concept. And it's my favorite. It's just, I, I love, it does everything I want a mascara to do. Now that is why I like the, what I call the, the non-pokey brushes. So like this one is the, it cosmetics. So when you've got a wand that has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bristles, you can kind of fake the thing I'm talking about. You can take a wand like this and just wiggle it back and forth at the root of the lashes to lay product down and then pull it all the way through. But the thing is you're, you're kind of using a wand that isn't designed to do it that way. These have the wand designed that way where there's a short end that is just laying down product at the end without, you know, the problem with this is the, the bristles are all that same longer length. And so when you do that little wiggle at the root, you end up getting mascara on your eyelids because those bristles are too long at that point. So I've always liked my mascara that way, but I've never had a wand that does it so well. So the Color Street Triflex and the What's Up Beauty Watch Me mascaras, those are the first two that I've tried that have that specific layout in their wand, and I love them both. They're fantastic. Speaking of mascara, Jones Road does not have that going on. That's not that kind of bristle brush, but it's my favorite kind of brush in terms of the bristles if it's not gonna be that. And that is the lots and lots and lots and lots of bristles. And I do prefer curved brushes over straight ones. Now the Jones Road mascara formula is less dramatic 
than these others that I that I'm talking about. But I just got mascara everywhere, so I'm trying to get a Kleenex so I can wipe it off. Cause I my aim is terrible. But here's what I'm gonna say about the Jones Road mascara. If you want that million lashes of look, millions of lashes look but you don't want the drama to it. You just want to look nice and fluttery, like a, a daytime, no makeup makeup kind of a look. You're not going for the drama. This gives you the fluttery lots of lashes without the big drama. It's more like your everyday but super fluttery kind of a mascara. And I find that that's tricky to find. Like, you're either too basic and not giving enough length or coating of lashes or you're like super dramatic like where's that middle ground it's right here it's jones road all right what else mm, just got this one let me wipe the fingerprints off of it oh it's so pretty i didn't know if i really was gonna like it or if it was just gonna be a handy thing for travel i knew i was gonna like it i just didn't know if i was gonna love it natasha denona but you know i love my natasha denona the hypernatural face palette so this was marketed as like no makeup makeup. I don't think it's no makeup makeup at all. I think it's way too much makeup for no makeup. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, is there a cat hair on my chin? Any blush that's that pink and who does full bronzer and contour on a no makeup makeup day? Like, that's too much makeup for no makeup. And these eye shades are too dark for no makeup makeup. However, they're perfect for everyday, simple, basic but bling, basic but glam makeup. And that's what I like. So I was attracted to this because the pinks and browns are great everyday colors, excuse me, colors for me. And this looked to me like something that I could travel with that's gonna have most of my face in that, in that palette. The only thing it's missing is like a good crease transition neutral, but I've been using the cheek color, the lightest and the middle one as that for my eyes and it, it's perfect. So then the only thing it's missing, if you dual purpose those cheek colors, there's no cheek highlight in here. And this shade's a little too dark for me to use as a cheek highlight. But that's fine because I'm so over the moon with the Serengeti highlighter, I'm not using anything else right now. So, <laughs> that's what I'm wearing now, of course. Uh, but, that's the only thing I wish was in here was a cheek highlight because I, I wear cheek highlight and there's not one in here so my whole face can't be in here. It's close though, it's very close. And if I, if I skip the cheek highlight, it's all in there. Love that palette, totally worth it, glad I bought it, like, it's it's what I hoped it would be. Is that, no, 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 one more thing, hold on. Is it one more thing? Yeah, one more thing. I picked up another box, these are not new. I've done videos on these. Uh, the Kiss Falscara, these are the wisps that you put underneath your lashes and apply them that way. I usually just buy the refill packs of just the lashes, but keep your eyes open because the reason I end up buying the whole thing, even though I really don't need the remover or the applicator glue at this moment, is when you find these on sale, sometimes the whole kit is the same price as the refills. And then you get yourself a backup of the remover and the glue. Uh, these are my favorites. This is, this when I do any kind of lashes, these are what I'm wearing now. I love the Falscara. They're, they're super lightweight. They don't itch. I don't feel them on my lashes. Whereas any kind of strip lashes just feel heavy to me. And I just must have a weird curve to my eyes because my inner corners on a full strip lash always pop up and they never stay put all day so then I would not wear them because I'd be nervous because I don't check my makeup all the time. Like I put my face on, I go out into the world and I don't look at my face again. Like I don't touch up my makeup. I might touch up my lip gloss but I don't really touch up anything. Like I'm, even my lip gloss is almost gone now. In fact, I'm just gonna put a little bit more on because <sighs> it's still winter and my lips are dry. But I don't like to touch up. So wearing lashes that are gonna pop off or look funny or be hanging off my eyelids, no, no, no good. Get your false gear up. But that was my tip of the day. Keep an eye on the sales because sometimes the kit is the same price as the refills and then you can get yourself a backup of the glue.
which that's primarily what I do that for. Is that all of it? I think that's all of it. That's all the new stuff. That's what I've been testing out lately. That's what I've been wearing lately. That's what I've been loving lately. Let me know in the comments because you guys led me, led me, led me in the right direction. The kitten just jumped up here. She's, I don't know what she's doing. She's chasing something on my vanity, which is not a good place for her to be. You guys led me down the right path with the Ritual Day Fee Thorn Oil for sure. Let me know down in the comments below, what do I need to check out? What am I missing? What's new? What do you want to see next? What would you like me to test? Let me know in the comments down below and check me out on Patreon. I post behind the scenes stuff. I've got, anytime I find like a good sale or discount on something, I'll post it in there that kind of stuff. I have a free tier where I post sales and stuff like that's, that's, you don't have to spend money. If you do join one of the paid tiers, I greatly appreciate it. It helps me buy all of the things that I review on this channel. I'm not a big enough influencer to get that much PR. I really don't get much at all. I get some and I'm so grateful for the things that I do get for free. But uh, yeah, most brands do not know I exist. So I buy this out of my own pocket and your support helps me. And if you don't wanna support financially or you don't have the means to, share, like, comment, engagement, that all helps me too. So I appreciate all of that. I appreciate all of you. Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.